10 LeBron James scapegoats. Number 1. The entire Cavs roster from 2004 to 2010. Since LeBron James entered the NBA in 2004 until his final year with the Cavs in 2010, it was always the same message. LeBron is great. LeBron is the king. LeBron is the chosen one, but he has no help. Now despite being able to have the best record in the season numerous times and making the finals one time in 2006 with the Cavs, people somehow still blame the other players on this team for either not helping LeBron to get past the conference finals or to win the NBA finals. Number 2. Russell Westbrook In 2021, AD missed 42 games. LeBron missed 26 games, and the Lakers only won 37 games. Yet, everybody somehow blamed Russell Westbrook for all the losing. They called him out, they took subtle shots at him when they benched him, they changed his name. All the while, LeBron and the rest of the team wouldn't play a lick of defense if their life had depended on it. Also. That offseason, they would try their very best to trade Russell, and when forced to keep him, LeBron settled with making certain that the Lakers would play the exact opposite of the Russell Westbrook way. Number 3. Kevin Love. Stop trying to find a way to fit out and just fit in. One of the tweets that LeBron sent out to Kevin Love in their first season together in 2015. Now, as nobody was sure why LeBron tweeted this at the time, as the team had won 13 of their last 14 games, but Kevin Love did call the tweet passive aggressive and silly, and it did set a direction for who was to be looked at if the team was to lose. Kevin actually pointed this out in an interview in 2018, where he says, I know that you know that when we have success, I might not get the credit. And when we lose, or have a bad string of games, that I might get the blame. But that comes with the territory. And at the end of the day, hopefully at the end of my career, they'll look and say, wow, Kevin really did a lot in Cleveland. Number 4. David Blatt David Blatt was hired in 2015 and led LeBron and the Cavs to the 2015 Finals, losing to the Golden State Warriors in 6 games after Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love were injured. The Cavs were famously up 2-1 in this series before Iguodala was put on LeBron holding him to only 33% shooting for the rest of the series. The Warriors then won the next four games, easily. However, the next season, after leading the Cavs to a conference leading 30-11 and record, Black was mysteriously fired to bring in Tyrone Lue, who was of course handpicked by LeBron James. Number 5. Mario Chalmers Though Mario Chalmers is famous for calling LeBron a female dog and somehow avoiding a near physical confrontation with the king, Mario was constantly verbally attacked by LeBron James when they were playing in Miami. Described as a whipping boy, LeBron and then also other teammates yelled at ridiculed and verbally abused Chalmers regularly in the four years they played together. It was so bad that even President Obama is quoted to have requested to take a picture of a serene scene of the team before somebody starts yelling at Mario. It seems that this Miami team who had early historic failures needed an outlet to let out the frustration of underachieving and Mario Chalmers was an easy target. Number 6 Dwayne Wade 
Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and LeBron James were supposed to win five, six, or seven titles together. Or so they thought. However, after losing one of the most embarrassing finals to the Mavs in 2011, apparently because of Mario Chalmers, the Heat bounced back and won titles in 2012 and 2013. Now, fast forward to 2014, and the Heat lose 4-1 to the Spurs. And suddenly, Dwayne Wade is too old. He's too injured. And he just is not a good enough teammate for LeBron to win another title with. And what was the result? LeBron taking his talents back to Cleveland so he can attempt to win another title with a younger, more healthy player or players like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Number 7. Kyrie Irving When LeBron came back to Cleveland in 2015, he inherited Kevin Love by trade and a young stud guard in Kyrie Irving who was the Rookie of the Year. LeBron and Kyrie instantly clicked. They lost the 2015 Finals, but won the 2016 Finals. Then out of nowhere, or as we thought, after losing the following 2017 Finals, Kyrie asked for a trade. Whew. Kyrie was then instantly seen as disgruntled, the bad guy, the villain, and the one responsible for breaking up the James, Love, and Irving championship contending Cavs team. However, if you dig a little deeper, you find out that Kyrie knew that LeBron was out. Kyrie knew LeBron had plans to leave him high and dry and head off to LA. And that's exactly what he did. And in an interview at the time, he stated the obvious by saying, If I was still in Cleveland, I would be dot dot dot, like everything that was foreseen to happen, happened. Meaning he knew that James was out, so he had to get himself out, but he looked like the one who was ditching the team, and not LeBron. Number 8, J.R. Smith Now we all saw that legendary boneheaded play that J.R. Smith made in the first game of the 2018 Finals. Dribbling out the clock instead of taking a shot that could have won the game. Now LeBron's reaction to this is really one for the ages, as he makes it seem as if it was J.R.'s fault why they lost the game. And now, some even think, why they lost the series. However, when you think about it, he could have easily missed that shot, which would have been a shot over Kevin Durant, who already had four blocks in that very game. Secondly, the series ended in a 4-0 sweep. So, if LeBron couldn't lead them to one single victory, in the next four games, is JR really to blame? Number 9, George Hill. Same game, Cavs down by one with under 10 seconds left, and 6 foot 9 LeBron passes up the shot over a 6 foot 3 defensive liability in Steph Curry to pass the ball to George Hill. Clay Thompson then fouls him with 4.7 seconds left and he ends up missing one shot, one free throw, which would have put the Cavs up by one point. Then of course, J.R. Smith, like we discussed, gets the rebound and the rest is history. But even now, there are tons of articles blaming George Hill for missing that free throw. But really. 
Should he even have been the one to take that shot? Or should have LeBron James taken it? Number 10, Andre Drummond. Now Drummond played with the Lakers and LeBron for only one year in 2021, in a year when they actually won the title. But when things weren't going the way how they should, all of a sudden, it was Drummond who was clogging the lane. It was Drummond who was slowing down the offense. It was Drummond who was playing up the expectations. And he spoke about it. He says, You gotta be built differently to play for that organization. You gotta be mentally strong, not only on the court, but off the court too. Because there's so much expectations to be the Laker and putting on the purple and gold because if you ain't living up to the expectations they will let you know you ain't worthy to put on that jersey end quote Andre didn't realize that it wasn't about the Lakers but more about playing with LeBron James